What's going on y'all? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jaleesa if you're new here and as I have promised you guys in a few of my videos, in this video I am going to be sharing with you everything you need to know prior to moving to Italy. This video is going to specifically be focusing on Naples, Italy because that is where my family and I currently live. I'll definitely be giving a lot of pointers to the military families that will be coming out here. But even if you're not affiliated with the military and you're moving elsewhere in Italy, keep watching this video because there are going to be some points that you don't want to miss. So let's go ahead and jump into it. A common question I see all the time, which is what do you need as far as documentations to actually move to Italy? So military or non-military, you're definitely going to need a passport and a visa to move to Italy. So your passport is your official documentation from your home country, basically saying that this person has the, the credentials and the privilege and the opportunity to travel internationally. And your visa is the documentation that you receive from your host nation, nation that you're moving to, in this case, Italy, that says you are allowed to stay in Italy for this reason and this is the amount of time that you can stay here. So there are several different types of visas. School visa, if you're coming over here to study abroad, if you are going to be working for a company here in Italy, you get a work visa. I have researched and seen that Italy is also creating a digital nomad visa. So if you're a content creator and you want to create content and live in Italy for an extended period of time, that visa they are working on. So there's different types of visas. Now, if you are moving to Italy as a military spouse, you're gonna need some additional documentation along with that passport and visa. So if you're a military spouse, you're going to need to complete and submit your medical overseas screening package. You're gonna need your regular passport, your no fee passport, and your visa. I know y'all, it's a lot. Now, I have created an entire video breaking down the process and the steps to complete your medical overseas screening process. So after this video, definitely check that out if that's something you need to go ahead and check off your to-do list. For your no fee passport is the government saying that this person is on travel in an official capacity. So it's almost like a work passport and you need that even if you're not an active duty member because again, you're going to be coming over here to support your spouse. So although you may or may not be working and you're moving over here not for work yourself, but your spouse is moving over here for work and therefore you're traveling over here in an official capacity. And then along with your no fee passport, as a military member, as I stated, you need to get a visa. And this visa is going to be different than ones if you were not going to be coming over here as a military spouse. This visa states that you were here in official capacity as a spouse. And so with the process of getting your no fee passport, it took about six weeks, I believe, for our no fee passports. It was the visas that took forever and a day off. That was the biggest hold up. Important point, you cannot get your visa until you have your no fee passport. So everything goes in order. You have to have your regular passport in order to get your no fee passport. You have to have your no fee passport in order to get your visa. It's no kind of trying to multitask all of them at the same time. For us, I think it took about two months for us to get our visas. My recommendation for anyone is if you are able to start the process early, start it now. If you know and you have your official orders, see if there's a way that you can start getting your documentation now because right now it's we're still technically in winter although it's like warm people are still daydreaming about their summer travel but when it gets hot and it gets pumping and jumping you are going to be in the mix with everyone else trying to get their passports so if you can start now before the summertime rush i would highly highly recommend that so the next question i hear a lot about or i see a lot about is shipping your car should i ship my car should i ship both cars is my car too big so let's have the car shipping conversation now from my knowledge the military will pay for one of your vehicles to be shipped and then the other one you gotta foot that yourself so for me and my husband we shipped his car 
his car is older than mine and we left my car back in the state. There is no restrictions if you wanna ship two cars, if you wanna ship three cars, if you wanna ship five cars, there's no restrictions. But from what I have seen and what I have heard and what I've been told by my husband, the military will only pay for you to ship one car. As far as what car you should ship or what car you shouldn't ship, I would just be mindful if you're moving to Naples, Italy, they rough out here on cars. I wouldn't, I would not recommend anyone shipping a super nice car that you love. If you have a car that is your baby, I would strongly discourage you from shipping it. The, I mean, Naples Kisses is a common thing out here. I mean, I don't know if we know anyone who has been able to drive out here and bypass getting their car damaged. My husband, prior to moving to Naples, never been in a car accident. His whole bumper was tore off when he got here. Um, I have a coworker who's been in like two accidents since she's been out here. Like the driving out here is crazy. I've made a video on that. Like the driving is ridiculous out here. So if you need two cars and you don't want to buy a car when you get here, then you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. But I would just warn anyone who's moving to Naples, Italy specifically, if you moving out here, just be prepared that there's a high likelihood that your car will be damaged. Something else to consider when you are shipping your car out here is the size of your vehicle. Cars out here are really, really small and the streets are extremely narrow. Like the streets are super, super narrow. Also parking is not a thing out here in regards to, hey, I'm going to a store or I'm going to a restaurant. Do they have parking? Like. It's not a thing, it, I, at least down here. So I would not recommend anyone bringing like a big Cadillac Escalade or a Suburban. I would try to, if you're gonna ship a car out here, ship your smallest vehicle on hand. So now you have arrived in Italy and I'm sure you're wondering what you can expect. First thing you can expect is you're going to be jet lagged. You're going to be tired you are going to be on a very long flight for us we came from virginia and gosh it was probably like ugh, it was like a 24-hour thing like it was a long long flight so you're going to be extremely jet lag you're gonna be tired you're gonna feel icky you're gonna feel dirty because you've been in a plane all night stopping at airports you're gonna want to rest so if you are moving to naples italy with the military, then your spouse's sponsor should have coordinated you to stay at the Navy Lodge. If the Navy Lodge is not available because sometimes the Navy Lodge is booked up, especially if it's like peak PCS season, you know, you may have to stay at another hotel that is very close to support site, but you'll go and you'll stay there. I'm sure you wanna know how long will we have to stay in the Navy Lodge. Well, that depends on how long it takes you to figure out your housing. It can be as short as a week, maybe two weeks, and it can be as long as, for us, three months. <laughs> so it really just depends on how long it takes you to figure out your housing situation. And I will hit on housing later. But after you get here, you'll go to the Navy Lodge. It took us about a week to get adjusted to the time change, things of that sort. So it took about a week, but you're gonna go to the Navy Lodge and that's where you're gonna be. The good thing about the Navy Lodge is they have like a stove and an oven. They've got a living room. So it's almost like a little apartment, um, like a holiday stay or an extended stay. That's kind of what it is. So it's not the worst situation in the world. I'm not gonna lie y'all. Sometimes I kind of miss being in the Navy Lodge. I don't know, it was kind of cool. I miss it, nostalgia. <laughs> so a additional tidbit point about the Navy Lodge. Um, I had someone ask me uh, a while ago in the comment section, after our three month period staying in the Navy Lodge, were we charged? So the answer is yes. I don't know all the nitty gritty details, but from our experience, 
Um, we stayed in the Navy Lodge for an extended period of time because we went through the process to ask for a exemption to the housing policy. So while they were working out that process to let us know if we could live off base or not, we stayed in the Navy Lodge. And from what I experienced and witnessed, it seems like like those first three months when you first get here, the Navy covers that. However, after that, like you have to pay out of pocket. Now, no one told us that. No one told us that. And I'm also saying this knowing that like when my husband was pushing back and fighting to get a reimbursement for us staying in the Navy Lodge, you know, the housing office had stated, oh, well, you know, you weren't supposed to stay in there that long. You were supposed to go to like a base apartment that a furnished base apartment while you waited for your exemption the process is not really clear on what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do so i don't want to sit here and tell you all like this is how it is i'll just say from my experience when we stayed in the navy lodge and we were there longer than three months we had to come out of pocket a little bit. So that is a little warning. If you are going to be going through the exemption to policy and it requires you to stay in the Navy Lodge longer than you're supposed to, do not be surprised if they try to charge you. But I'll speak a little bit more about that later. Something else you're going to want to figure out when you get off the plane and you get to Naples, Italy is your phone service. For us, when we moved over here, we have T-Mobile as our cell phone provider. And if you know anything about T-Mobile, they are trash. Like I had T-Mobile years ago and it was trash back then and it only got a little bit better now. But I digress. T-Mobile is not the best service when you get here you will not have the greatest connection or service when you get here. So you're gonna wanna get a Italian number. And it's, it's just also really good. If you're gonna be here for like two, three years, you're definitely gonna wanna get an Italian number because there's a likelihood you will be calling some like local Italian numbers, whether it's like doctors or um, restaurants. So you, you, you're, you're definitely gonna need an Italian number because at least for T-Mobile, they charge you like 25 cents a minute to call internationally and that joint can add up. The two providers that are very common here in Italy are Vodiophone and Tim, T-I-M. On base, they have a Vodiophone store. Oftentimes, most people will get off the plane, put their stuff down in the room and run over to the Vodiophone store and get a eSIM card. A eSIM card is an electrical SIM card where, you know, all you need to do is connect a number to your phone and you have two phone lines. That's what we did. Super, super easy. And the reps at the store will be able to help you through it. I will say this, I've heard several, several times. If you get your Italian number at a, another Vodio phone that is not on base, whether it be at the mall, or I've even heard if you go to the Joint Forces base, you get a better rate. So we pay about $45 a month for our Italian phone service. However, I've heard some people who get their phone set up at JFC and they pay like 15 euros a month. So if there's a way that you can get off base to go to JFC or to go to another Vodafone location, I would consider it because you could save some money each month maybe like two or three days after you first get to naples and you go to the navy lodge you are required to go to area orientation if you're a military member and that is where the base is going to give you the official welcome and everything you need to know about naples italy so this is just jaleesa's I've been here for almost a year, so this is what I think you should know, but the base is going to give you the official, this is what you need to know now that you're here in Naples, Italy. Now, it is a requirement and you should go. However, I will say if you are a family like us, you have little ones, it may be very, very difficult to go. And I'm not even gonna lie y'all, I didn't go to area orientation. I did not go. And it's not because I did not want to go, but it was because I have a two-year-old daughter 
and area orientation is three days two of those three days is like eight hour presentation of people talking to you giving you information now what two year old gonna sit in an auditorium for two days eight hours straight it's not happening so unfortunately i was not able to go i will say that the active duty spouse is required to go so one of the two of you will be in attendance to that i have heard that if you need some type of babysitting um, assistance that the cdc does have services where they could watch your child for the amount of time that you're going to be in area orientation however the frustrating part about that is one is really not like a clearly like advertised like hey the cdc will you know watch your kid while you're in area orientation and it's not like a very simple efficient process when it was broken down to me the person was like you have to fill out like official paperwork almost like you're enrolling them in the school for them to even watch your kid and by the time i found this out it was literally like the next day area orientation was happening so i was like i'm not doing that i'm not doing it so it is an option i'm putting it out here i don't know what the process is i would definitely recommend talking to your sponsors to see if they can like pick some brains and ask if there is someone there but if you don't go for area orientation for anything else the one thing you need to go to area orientation for is to take your driving test you cannot drive in naples italy if you're affiliated with the government without taking your driving test now the driving test is just literally you identifying um italian like street signs so it's not a hard test to take everyone passes you'll be fine but you have to take that test and they give that test they provide that test in area orientation i have heard that you can coordinate a time after like outside of area orientation to take the test but the easiest quickest way to do it is to do it in area orientation i did show up for area orientation to take the test my husband texted me when the test was going on and i was able to get in there and take it and thankfully there were some petty officers that were there that kind of kept parker cool calm and collected and calm so i could take the test so you know we're a community so if you need to take the test i'm sure somebody will be there to kind of help your kid for a little while as you're taking the test after about the first two days that you get to naples or anywhere in italy if you're military associated but specifically naples you are going to feel like you are going crazy because you're stuck on base literally the first week and a half oh my gosh i felt like i was going crazy you are literally stuck on base so naples is the third largest city in italy so it's a large city however where the base is located it is not close to downtown it doesn't have like convenient public transportation there's nothing near the base so after like the first two days you are going to be trying to do any and everything to get off base and so you need a driving test in order to get a car in order to get off base literally y'all i would go to the commissary almost every day <laughs> when we did not have a car leave for like a week or two straight we would go to the commissary every day every day we would go to the commissary because we had nothing to do but go to the commissary so do not miss the driving test at area orientation because that is your golden ticket off base now if you decided you were only going to ship one car or maybe you decided you weren't going to ship a car at all that you were going to just wait until you got here and buy a beater car let's talk about some of your car options when you get here when you get here there is a what we call a lemon lot on base and the lemon lot has cars that other members like other military members are selling oftentimes people will be leaving italy going back stateside or wherever they're going and so they'll sell their cars before they leave because if you buy a car here um, sometimes those cars are not approved to be driven back in the state so what a lot of people will do is hey i'm gonna sell this car to somebody else if you're coming here during peak pcs season you're gonna be good because it, it's like 
the amount of cars that would come and go off the lot I mean you'd have a car that would get there on like a Monday and then by like Tuesday the cars would be gone so I say that to say when you're here during peak PCS season there are a lot of lemon lot car options but I will also emphasize you really do have to move fast on getting a car I don't believe in making rush decisions but you definitely don't want to sit too long on a car if you see one in the lot I would say just go ahead and contact the seller because during peak PCS season they like they don't stay on the lot that long. Price point, what can you expect to pay for a car when you are buying it here? If you're buying it from the lemon lot, I would say a good range is anywhere between like 3,000 euros to like five to 6,000 euros. Last summer, that's kind of the good spot that I saw people selling their cars for. I did see some cars for as low as like maybe 1,200 euros and as high as like, 20, 25 euros, 25,000 euros. Um, a lot of the cars that are more expensive, those cars are like luxury and almost brand spanking new. The more $1,200 ones, they're like these small Italian cars that like, they almost look like small little clown cars. But a decent sized car that, you know, is not super, super small, is not very expensive, and it's got a few Naples kisses, I would say anywhere between like 3,000 to 6,000 euro is going to be that price point. Another good place that you can look to buy a car is Facebook. There are a lot of buying cars in Naples, Italy, auto groups in Naples, Italy, where a lot of the local vendors in the area will be selling cars. Um, they're constantly advertising cars all throughout the year. Um, so those are good resources as well for you all. And you know, it's just same process. You can hit the dealer up and you know, try to negotiate something. I feel like from when when I was looking at the Facebook group, I felt like the prices were just a little bit more expensive than buying them on the Lemon Lot. Um, so keep that in mind. But if the Lemon Lot has a low car inventory, then I would just definitely consider, okay, let me reach out to some private dealers off base. So once you have bought your car, before you can drive that bad boy off the base and like really see the streets of Naples, Italy, you have to go through the MBRO office to register your car and claim ownership. Now MBRO is the motor vehicle registration office here in Naples, Italy at the base. I'm sure it's the same thing if you're on base somewhere else in Italy, but it's essentially the office where you register the car under your family's name you take ownership of the car and um, you get your license tags and things of that sort you cannot like I thought when we bought our car that we would be able to like take our car off the lot and drive it hey give us the keys it's ours now like the person selling you the car cannot like render or give up ownership of that car until you go to the MBRO office um for the man that we were working with he was really really nice and super super helpful um he set up the appointment for us um but the seller or the seller's representative um has to be at the appointment along with the active duty member who is buying the car so my husband at the time when we bought our car he was back to work I was not working at the moment, so I had all the availability in the world, y'all, to go to this appointment, but I could not do it. It had to be my husband since he is active duty, and they went to the appointment to do the paperwork. Good thing about in the MBRO office is it's in the Navy Lodge, so it's not like you have to like travel off base or go to Capo. Like it's literally in the Navy Lodge, so all in the same space place. You just have to. Get an appointment now when you are at your mbro appointment something else that you will be getting and receiving is your fuel card your fuel card is a credit card that you are provided here by the base to get gas from certain gas stations and from what i'm told you're not taxed on that gas there's like some type of cool like 
way that you save money using this gas card. Um, and they'll provide it to you at the MBRO um, office. Now, I will say this, you cannot use that card for multiple cars. And so that comes, it becomes tricky if like, you bring one car over here that's gasoline and then you have another car that takes diesel in our case. At the appointment, they will ask you, what car do you want this credit card to be associated with? And from here on out, you can only use that credit card to purchase gas for that car that you designated. So the rule of thumb that someone told us is whatever car you know has a bigger gasoline tank um, that's the car that you should associate with the credit card our rule of thumb or our thought process was we didn't have my husband's car was not physically in Italy by the time that we got our fuel card so we just associated the diesel car that we purchased here on the card and called it a day I don't know how much money we really saved because I mean like it, I mean, I feel like it all balances out in the end. So I don't lose much sleep or I don't drive myself crazy. Like, oh my gosh, like which, should we switch the card to the Corolla? And would we save, like, I don't think about it. It's just, you know, it's something that they do. I haven't thought about it since we bought the car, but you do get a fuel card and it does help you save a little bit more money um, when purchasing gas out here. I'm sure you all have been waiting. You want to know about housing. Housing in Italy. So first things first, I created an entire video on our house hunting process in Italy. The process, if you're a military spouse, when it comes to the exception to policy, um, base housing, all that. So this is another video that after you finish watching this one you need to go check out the housing video because i even provided some footage of some of the houses that we saw so quick rundown on housing without getting into too much details if you're coming out here as a military spouse know that the policy as it stands right now is that you have to live on base for a year now there is an exception to policy process where you can say because of said reason I need to live off base. And that's what my husband and I did. We submitted the paperwork to live off base and we didn't get approved. I don't know if our reasoning would have gotten approved or not, but we were able to bypass living on base because by the time they executed the paperwork, there were no more houses available that met the needs of our family. So we ended up having to go look for housing off base which is why we stayed in the navy lodge for longer than three months which is why we had to come out a little bit come out of pocket a little bit so these are all things to consider um if you are someone who would prefer to live on base or you don't have a problem living on base then it would just be a lot easier if you just go ahead and try to move into base housing as soon as possible and to be quite honest i don't even know i don't know if i mentioned this in my housing video but you can pick your house on base before you even move out here if you work with your sponsor your sponsor can be your you know proxy to to do the house tours while you're still preparing things back in the states they can take videos you can contact the housing office and they can send you all the information that you need in order to set up your housing when you get here i have literally seen people in like facebook groups who said that as soon as they got off the plane in italy they were able to move into their base housing so if you want an easy transition and you don't mind living on base for a year then I would say go ahead and start talking to your sponsor to coordinate that. If you are like me, and I wouldn't say my family, if you're like me, and you do not want to live on base, regardless if they say no, I would still ask for the exception to policy. I still stand 10 toes down on that. Ask them and make them tell you no, but I don't believe in just taking no or assuming the answer is going to be no. Because who knows? Like again, literally from the time my husband was in area orientation people are like oh there's no sense of wasting your time to get an exception to policy because they rarely ever get approved just go to base housing just go to base housing like literally that's everyone like 
pushes that down your throat base housing base housing base housing base housing but i'm a big believer of like you gonna have to tell me no like i want you in writing to tell me no i'm not just going to take somebody's word and say oh well most likely you're gonna say no no i don't want to most likely i want a definitive no and because i i made my husband politely um go through the process we ended up living off base so I'm a firm believer, if you want to live on base, ask the question. If they say no, then it's okay. Live on base for a year and then, you know, move off base. But I personally would not just take somebody's word. I want paperwork with you saying no. I will say again, another reason why I think they're trying to be really firm about sticking to that policy is I did come across like some an updated article explaining the housing process from the housing office here. So again, just to emphasize, I do think they're gonna be really strict about it coming up this PCS season. I will try to link that article below. So another important thing that I'm sure everyone wants to know about is the healthcare options here in Italy. What healthcare can you expect? Now, if you're coming out here as a military spouse, then you still kind of fall into that bucket of the TRICARE world. If you don't know about TRICARE, I have a great detailed video on my channel just breaking down, you know, TRICARE Prime and TRICARE Select. So if you don't know a thing about TRICARE, I would recommend watching that video after this one as well but if you are not new to this but true to this to this military life then you know all about TRICARE and now the question is like what TRICARE can I have when I'm over here now when I was preparing to come out here I felt like I only heard or saw people talking about oh you got to do TRICARE Prime you got to go do TRICARE Prime there's no TRICARE Select over here that's not necessarily true that is not the case when we moved over here, I was still given the option to remain on TRICARE Select. Prior to moving out here, I was on TRICARE Select. I'm a big, big, big um, advocate. I love TRICARE Select. And when I had intentions on staying on TRICARE Select when I moved out here. Um, and I had the option to stay on TRICARE Select. So if someone tells you you cannot be on TRICARE Select, do not take that as facts. Acts the TRICARE representative on base. When I moved here, I was definitely given the option to stay on TRICARE Select or go to Prime. I ended up switching back to TRICARE Prime because something you will experience when you get here, you're jet lag and you're overwhelmed. Like this is not a easy move. When you're first here, it can be extremely overwhelming. And then add on fact, like you're here with the military, you have policies and standards that the military is making you adhere to, and that may not align with what you as an individual want. So it was a whole lot going on. And for me, when I first moved out here, I wanted to stay on TRICARE Select because with TRICARE Select, it would have allowed me the option and the freedom to seek help healthcare out in the local Italian economy and as someone who is very adamant and has aspirations to live overseas permanently following my husband getting out of the military I wanted to kind of you know experience what the healthcare options were overseas but because when you first get here there are gonna be a lot of things you got to do paperwork you got to sign it just felt like a lot of people were like water hosing me with information and I felt like I didn't have enough time to really weigh my options and make a sound decision that I really, really wanted. So I ended up going with TRICARE Prime instead of going with Select. I do still wish I would have went with Select, but at this point I'm not going to change it but it is an option if it is something that you want. One of the things that, I think one of the things that definitely swayed me a little bit to actually just doing TRICARE Prime was the fact that um, if you get healthcare outside of base and go through the Italian, like traditional healthcare option, you have to know Italian to you know kind of understand what like health recommendations are being shared with you. So I think that was the major reason why I ended up going with TRICARE Prime. Like it was definitely shared like, hey, if you do go with Select and you get your healthcare off base, just know that like there is going to be a language barrier there. So that's something to consider. I'm not a healthcare insurance representative. So you have to make the best decision for you and your family. For me, 
back in the summertime, the language barrier would not have deterred me. If anything, it would have encouraged me to learn Italian more and do it just to experience it. But that is something that you have to take into consideration. I will say that although I am back on TRICARE Prime and I receive all of my healthcare needs on base, the medical on base is really, really good. Really, really, really good. They have done a good job of like reinstilling confidence and faith that I have in military medicine because as I shared in my TRICARE video, I definitely had um, not the greatest experience dealing with medical, dealing with military medical. So being out here in Naples, I will say working with the hospital has been really, really good. Every time that I have gone there for my healthcare needs or my daughter's healthcare needs. Um, the customer service has been really, really good. If you have an emergency and you need some care and you are not close to the base or you are out of town, do not stress. Like most other European countries, Italy has a public health option, healthcare option. So if there is an emergency and you need like care immediately, you can still go to the Italian emergency room and you will be cared for and you will not be charged. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the Italian government and the people of Italy for having this option. I am being so serious. I thank you so much. I say this because if you watch my Milan video, if you have not watched it, again, it's a lot of good information in all my videos, y'all. So after this video, just go ahead and binge all my videos and subscribe to my channel because I got some more information coming. If you watch my Milan um, trip video, we ended up having to go to a hospital in Milan. And, you know, we got to experience a little bit the um, Italian healthcare option and we ended up getting service and afterwards we were like hey do we got a bill do we need to go to accountant or somebody to pay and they said no like you're good to go so i have experienced the healthcare through that and also recently i had to be referred out to a dermatologist it was good so i say this to say that if you are possibly considering trying to get your healthcare needs met outside of the military world, I, I think you'll be good to go. Again, I'm not here to tell anyone what to do, but I've experienced the military, you know, healthcare here in Naples, and I've also experienced the Italian healthcare, and I think both do a good job at at least caring for my family's medical needs. So let's talk about school. If you have kids here in Naples, Italy, the schooling option. So I have shared this in some other videos, but if you're coming over here as a military family, you have the base school and you have the base daycare. That is an option. I will say that if you are coming out here and you know you want to put your child in the CDC or have them in like base daycare or school, if you have your orders, like the paperwork saying that you are moving to Naples, Italy, start the paperwork now. Do not wait, do not wait. The process to get your child at least in base daycare takes a very, very long time. We received our official orders that we were moving out to Naples, Italy in February of 2023. I think my husband put in the paperwork for our daughter to go to base daycare of March 2023 and we did not get the final green light that she was approved to do base daycare until September 2023 and it was like a week after I was supposed to start work so it takes forever especially base daycare so start the process now if you want your child to go to base daycare now if you don't necessarily want your child to go to base daycare there are um, international schools in the local area that you can opt for you have to pay to go to those schools i mean i think you got to pay for base daycare as well as i don't think base daycare is free um the school is free but base daycare from my knowledge is not free so you have to pay for both um our daughter goes to a international school and she loves it we love it um it's a great option so that those are your schooling options you've got the base and then you've got international schools i don't even know if italy has public schools do it do italians have public schools i don't know because i mean if you have an older kid i guess that's an option too but i don't know anything about it all i know is base school 
in international school. So job options for military spouses overseas. This is another topic that I have given a detailed explanation on. So again, another video for you to check out after this one but as a military spouse your job options are limited because of SOFA which is an agreement between the United States and Italy that basically puts some parameters on the job options that we are allowed to take. Um, I will say they just updated the SOFA policy so as a military spouse you are allowed to work remotely so if let's say you work for I don't know, Starbucks. Like if you work for Starbucks corporate office, you're an engineer for Starbucks and you wanna stay working for Starbucks and your manager at Starbucks says you are allowed to work remotely for us in Italy, that is now allowed. In the past, you were not allowed to do that, but now they changed SOFA to where you can work for a company remotely. I definitely encourage if you can work out a remote work option, do that. But if that's not an option, you do have the option to work for the federal government. And there are jobs ranging from, you can work at the commissary, you can work at the CDC, you can work at the base doing, you know, analytical like program analyst analyst stuff you could work in the naval hospital like there's different positions but again it can be very challenging to get your foot into those positions because oftentimes if you're a spouse you have spousal preference and i've detailed that so go watch that video for a more detailed explanation but um if you have the spousal preference but you don't have the credentials it could take some time and on top of like it just being challenging to find a position in the federal government that matches up with your skill set, it takes a very long time to get hired and onboarded. I applied for my position February 2023. I got the official you have been hired letter June of 2023 and I started working for my current office September 2023 so it is a very long process so another topic that a lot of people have expressed interest in when it comes to moving here to Naples Italy is the grocery store options so here at least in Naples there are a ton of grocery stores that you can you know visit and get all of your household food needs my preferred favorite grocery store is Conad that's another video I made y'all on the grocery store option and experience here um so check that video out as well if you want to get a real deal like picture of what you can expect going to the grocery store out here in italy but aside from conad you've got eurospin deco md um i think it's sagon sagon grocery store um there's a whole bunch of grocery stores like you've got your main ones the ones I typically see are Deco, Eurospin, Conad, and MD Groceries, but then you have like your smaller neighborhood grocery stores as well. So there are plenty of grocery store options. Um, also, if you're someone who, you know, instead of going to a grocery store where like they have the dairy and the butcher and the fish market, like all in one, in Italy, there are several different stores that just specialize in a certain food. So you've got your Pescateria, which is the fish store where they only do fish. You've got your cheese stores where they only sell cheese. You've got your butcher shops where they only sell like meat. And they, you got your, be your bakery option. So if you're someone who's like, huh, I would rather go to a store that specializes in this one thing, but I have confidence that what they're giving me is fresh. That, that is a option. Out here, if you're coming out here as a military spouse, you also have the commissary. I rarely shop at the commissary, you all. That is the last grocery store I go to. I only go to the commissary for things that are just very uniquely American. Um, you will notice that at some of the grocery stores, especially the bigger ones, they do have like an international food option like we have back in the States. But oftentimes those food process products are very, very expensive. Like at Conad, they have like peanut butter and like the all natural peanut butter that is literally just peanuts and oil and salt like they literally charge like eight dollars for that 
for some Tabasco hot sauce at Conad. They're charging like $4 a bottle for Tabasco where I can go to the commissary and get that for like $1.50. So I will only, I only go to the commissary for uniquely American things. But outside of that, I try to bypass going to the commissary just as a whole. The quality of food is 10 times better if you buy it from the local Italian grocery stores. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I have seen in these military spouses um, groups where people are picking up stuff from the commissary and there's a expiration date of six months ago, food is spoiled, like the quality is just not the greatest at the commissary. One of the number one things I go to the commissary and purchase is my hair products. Someone had asked me, you know, as a black woman, what are the hair care options here in Italy? And I will say when it comes to buying products for my hair, I do get that at the base. The base does have a small variety of black hair care options. Um, so a lot of the products that they have, they have Cantu. They have a lot of Cantu options. They have a couple of black owned hair care products. One of them I actually use quite a bit back in the States. And there's another one, I think it's called Michelle um, or Michelle. Um, they have a few of that woman's hair products here. I think they have Carol's daughter here. They also have, gosh, what's the other one? There's another very popular um, black hair care brand that they sell here. So they do have options. Of course, it's not going to be like plentiful if you were to go to a hair store back in the States, but they do definitely have some black um, hair care products that I go to the base to get. I have heard that if you want more options that you could go to a African store here in Naples. I have not visited a um, African store, so I can't vouch for that, but I've definitely seen it in some Facebook groups that like a lot of the um, black service members or black families will, if they need like certain particular products for their hair, they'll go like seek them out at the um, African store. So that's an option as well. Y'all, I've been talking so long and my other camera just died so I had to switch over to my 360 so if things are not as you know if things seem a little wonky or if the lighting is off I do apologize but I wanted to keep keep things rolling and finish up this video so I did switch over but if you like certain things from a particular culture or if you are a member of a particular community or culture if that particular community is represented here in Italy then there are ways to get some of those things that you love and appreciate from your culture here I have seen a lot of people who are um, either coming from Japan or who are Japanese who um, have certain particular things that they enjoy um, in their, their cuisine. And I've seen a lot of people ask like, well, can I buy this here? Can I buy that here? Should I stop off on it? Like that's a frequent question I see. The number one recommendation I see all the time is yes, stop up on it because again, you're in Italy. So you will probably not be able to access that particular food or thing that you like. And that would be the case for hair care products. Um, going back to my previous comment, if there is a certain um, product that you like to use on your hair, um, I would definitely recommend stocking up on a couple of um, bottles or jars before you come out here. Stock up on it. But if that community is represented in Naples, in Italy, then you may be able to find some of those um, specific cuisine things at a store. And the final, final point, y'all, I've been talking so much, y'all. <laughs> but the final point that I wanted to talk about is crime. I see it all the time, is Naples safe? Oh my gosh, is it safe here? What can I expect? Um, I remember listening to one of my favorite podcasts not too long ago, and it's all focused on like um, expats, like leaving America and living abroad. And one of the guests made a comment, and I'm not saying it to a T, but she made a comment and said that safety is an illusion and once you realize that safety is an illusion then you realize you're not really truly safe anywhere and i say that to say like 
you know, you're, there's no real place anywhere on this earth that is 100% free of any type of crime or activities. Like we're all at risk at, for something happening. Um, there are some places that are better than others, but no place is just inherently 100% safe. For me personally, in my opinion, I do feel like Naples, Italy is safe. I do know that there are gangs here, but there are gangs back home in America, y'all. Um, there is crime that happens here, but there's crime that happens back in America. Like, the same things that happen here in Italy, they happen in the States. Um, and you know, we could have that talk or have that debate on which country has it worse. Because, you know, we, we would all have our own opinion. So I generally think that being in Naples is safe. I have, I feel so much at peace here. I'm happy here. I love being here. I don't really stress about, you know, I don't really stress about my safety and my well being leaving and coming and going from my house or my family. You know, I, I stay prayed up, y'all. So I pray every morning, every night. I pray, pray throughout the day. So, you know, I have faith that the good Lord is going to cover me and my family as we go about our day. So I feel safe here. Um, as I've mentioned it before, break-ins are a thing here. So yes, that is something that, you know, is, it's very prevalent here, break-ins, people do break into houses. Um, I've seen like literally, I think I saw somebody post in a Facebook group like not too long ago that they were having food at a restaurant and their car got broken in while they were inside the restaurant. So break-ins are a thing. I have heard a trend that if you live in some of the nicer areas of Naples, Italy, where a lot of Americans live, i.e. Pazzuoli, i.e. Lago, I've heard and a large number of people say that houses get broken in there quite frequently. That's not to deter anyone from living out there because when you go out to those areas, especially Pottswoli, it's beautiful out there. It's beautiful out there. I also know of a lot of people who live in Pottswoli who haven't got broken in. So again, you have to go with what works best for you and your family and just, you know, again, be mindful and aware of your surroundings. If you're gonna be, if you're gonna go somewhere for a long period of time, don't leave anything exposed in your car. If you are going to be taking a trip, when you're here, we have shutters um, in our windows. Pull your shutters down so nobody can see what's in your house. Um, you know, just be smart. <laughs> Keep your head on a swivel and you will be fine. There are certain areas in the city that they say um, are, you know, have an increase of, you know, gang activity. Don't go to those areas. I have heard those areas don't even have much for you to do. So, like, don't go to them. Go to places where, you know, people go to have a good time and enjoy themselves. So, you just got to be smart. You got to keep your head on the swivel. But I'm here to tell you, I love living here. I feel safe here. I feel like my family is safe here. I personally, I feel safer here than I did back in the state. So that is my two cents on the safety in Italy. Y'all, this is it though. No. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, you guys. Liking this video helps me to grow as a channel. And I have some more content centered around Naples, Italy, and Italy in general coming up on my channel, so you're not going to want to miss out, y'all. I was going to add an additional section of like things to do in Naples, Italy, and just things to do in Italy. In general, like when you get here, I wanted to add that for you all, but I'm tired. So if you are interested about like things that you can do around the city, comment below. I will make that video and I will share that information for you. If you have questions about Italy or Naples, Italy specific, that specifically that I did not touch on in this video, put them down in the comment section. Comment your questions below and I will do my best to answer them to the best of my abilities, you guys. As I shared throughout this video, I have a ton of videos where I have talked about 
the housing process in detail, the military, medical, overseas screening process, um, job preference if, with the government, the cost of living breakdown here in Italy. I have touched on it. I wanted to do a video where I kind of bunched it all together and put it in one place. But if you need more details than what I have provided, go check out those videos. I will link them below. Go on a binge spree of my videos, y'all, because if there is a question that you may have or something that you're trying to figure out about Italy, specifically Naples, Italy, there's a good chance I have hit on it. But if you have a question, just comment below. That works too. I'm always open to answering questions. So I am an open book. Hit me up, comment below, and I will do my best to answer your questions. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video below. Bye-bye.